Hey, so I am now on uh-huh. the line with a Mr. Maxime Chisto Kyoto. <laughs> is that is it? Yeah, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are a Brazilian Zoo dancer, uh, instructor as well, competitor. You also do multiple different variations of samba as well. Is that right? Correct. So tell me again, what were the styles of samba you do? So uh, I work and teach uh, locally and internationally with Brazilian Zouk. Uh-huh. I'm all-star champions uh, dancer nice. because we have a uh, rating, international rating, according to Brazilian Zouk Dance Council. Uh-huh. I, I teach and work with uh, traditional samba and samba funkeado. It's the style of uh, traditional samba gigateira. Okay. I like a lot and dance West Coast Swing. Uh, I like a lot bachata and salsa dance at the parties, like in you're usually more in socials. So like that. Hey, okay, perfect, man. Perfect. But I wanna I told you this before, but I wanna tell you again. I want to thank you so much for taking time out here to talk to me, sir. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. Me too. Of course, of <laughs> course. So uh if I'm not mistaken, you also your one half or your dance partner is uh, Miss Oksana Andreva. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, man. So I think a great way to start this out, man, I would love to hear from you. I've never had a chance to visit Russia, man. So I would love to hear from you. You know, what was your childhood like growing up in Russia? Well, childhood was, I think it was actually normal, ordinary childhood. I was born in a small town uh, in the north of the country. So the town used to be the closed one because it uh, specializes in atomic submarine building. So then they opened it. And uh, I think at about the age of uh, 18 or 20, I moved to St. Petersburg because I uh, wanted to study there. So actually I studied as the uh, uh, professional interpreter from English into Russian and back, and from German into Russian and back. Uh, I specialized in consecutive interpretation as well as the uh, uh, parallel. When you, you when you translate as the speaker uh, uh, speaks, you translate simultaneous, it's simultaneous. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then I, uh, I graduated from the university and uh, started working in a bank first as a project manager so everything was far from the dancing actually completely far from the dancing and then i was um, headhunted by english actually uk company it's a project engineering company in automotive industry so i worked there as a, a project manager and was responsible for the Russian actual branch of that company. And um, what happened in Russia then, it was a huge, actually, it was all over the world, the huge crisis. I think it was 2008. And I decided to invest my, in myself and um, uh, join the master's program in St. Petersburg Radio School of Management. It's uh, 500, it's not even 500, it's, 100 best universities um, uh, in the world, business universities, 100, yeah, I think it's 100 or 200. And um, actually, I started there dancing salsa because we have many, many, many exchange students. And in order to integrate them into Russian uh, and students' community, this university they invented like a salsa club for people to chat to socialize to enjoy their students life and i decided to go to the salsa and then it turned into brazilian zook and (laughs) and i started working with this uh, dance actually as my profession okay okay you dropped a lot of information man i mean excuse me um how many languages do you speak uh, I speak perfectly well in English. I uh, now I mostly read and understand German nice. because uh, I don't work with German a lot, unfortunately. I understand very well Portuguese. Nice. Very well. 
because I work with Brazilians, but I don't speak a lot um, Portuguese, but I understand a lot of it. That's awesome. Uh, I know Ukrainian very well because my grandmother was born in the Ukraine. So I, I understand this quite well. Yeah, that's amazing. Man. You're like a little polyglot. I, I'm very <laughs> curious to hear from you, man. Um, How difficult was it to learn English? How, what was that like for you? I think, in my opinion, uh, English is uh, is not a difficult language comparing to other languages. It's uh, for me, I call it very basic. So, um, for me, it was not actually difficult to learn. <laughs> That's it. Um, for example, we- Portuguese is a bit more difficult, a bit more difficult. German is a bit more difficult, but still more or less okay. So it's all right. Were you were you taught English as a child or, or in school? I had some classes of school in English. Um, yeah, I had I had like a basic uh, basic course of English, I think. Uh, and then I took some additional courses, private courses. We call them private courses. Some additional courses with a personal coach. And but I learned actually the proper English. I learned it with, of course, with the personal coach. And then when I started working with English um, guys from the UK, that was uh, actually the best thing to learn the language. Okay, I definitely understand that. I definitely understand that. So, um, so you know, you kind of walked me through your whole life story. But uh, you said, you know, during your master's program is when you started, you started to join that salsa club, right? Is that correct? Yeah, salsa club. Yeah. And, and so tell me this one. I'm very curious to hear from you, man. Tell me, um, you know, what was your beginner stage like in salsa and learning salsa? What was that like? Well, I, I was complete rubbish, man. Complete rubbish. Uh, I would say like that. So I don't have any dance background at all. So I, I'm very good in sports. So I'm... Uh, I'm a former bodybuilder, power lifter. I played basketball a lot. I was uh, when in my during my teenage years, teenage years, I was a big fan of Michael Jordan. So I played basketball a lot. I was playing for our local uh, town team. Uh, we were competing in the region. So I think I was playing at a very good level for them, for the region. I would say of uh, Russia. Are you a point guard or what position are you? Say again? What position were you? Uh, the position, the position I was, uh, I was at a defense, defense, because I'm not that tall. Okay. So I was usually defending. Mm-hmm. You were like point guard though, shooting guard, or what were you? Yeah, I, I did a lot of point stuff. Okay. I, gotcha. I was, I was very good in it. So okay. I usually, I was attacking uh, when I did, I did three points usually. Not to go to the uh, basket because... Uh, the guardians defense guys was always <laughs> didn't allow me to uh, point and i was actually striking from far <laughs> and, and so and, you said oh i'm very curious man you you dropped a lot of knowledge man um i want to kind of jump ahead a little bit and what i mean about this next question um you say you were a bodybuilder man i'm very curious to know again i get uh, local Again, okay. local bodybuilder. I'm yeah. a kind. Uh, we we have different divisions. I think you know that it's a uh, um, candidate of master of sports, master of sports, international master of sports, and something like that in in bodybuilding. So I was a candidate to a master of sports, and uh, actually all my childhood and teenage years were like in sports. So I, I know my body very well. So when I started dancing, <laughs> I, uh, and because I was playing, used to play basketball, for me to repeat the steps was very easy because I know my body. I know how to transfer the weight. But my body itself was very, very stuff. Not stuff, I would say. Like very, tense, very stiff? Yeah, stiff. Stiff, yeah, very stiff. And this is what I was working a lot. Uh, about the how to relax the body, how to yeah. properly do the movements. That's so, it. What I want to ask you, though, the reason I brought that up, um, uh-huh. I'm I'm curious to know: are there any 
are there any skills that you acquire from bodybuilding that you're able to translate to, you know, salsa, to Brazilian zoo, to, you know, West Coast swing? Is there any uh, crossover there for you? Um, actually, bodybuilding is a very challenging um, sport because it requires huge concentration on what you do. And for me, bodybuilding, uh, it helped me a lot, not only in dancing, but in life too. First of all, to plan your day, to set the goals, to achieve goals, to suffer sometimes. For example, before the competition, you can't eat some types of food. You're on a diet, on a special diet that uh, dehydrates you. Yes, then you, um, you, you cut all the carbs, you cut then fat, you, uh, before two days of the competition, you cut water. So it's quite challenging and it strengthens your will. And in general, the professional sport, any type of sport, I think, uh, helps you to be like that, very willing to achieve the goal, concentrated on what you do, and invest all your resources to achieve that goal. I, I definitely understand that, man. I definitely do. Um, so, so let me ask you this then. So, you know, you have all these titles under your belt. Um, I'm very curious to hear from you, man. Uh, you know, I guess what, what drew you to dancing so much? You know, why did you pick dancing over all your other personal hobbies and personal enjoyments? I think I, I, the answer is very easy because to social dancing, if we're speaking about the social dancing, I think most of the people coming to dances like salsa, bachata, kizomba, zouk, it's just because they want some additional emotions. Because mostly uh, you come for new people, new type of emotions. It's like your hobby. And that, that's, I came, I was not the exception. I came for the same things because as I said, Salsa Club uh, in um, our graduate school of management was created to socialize international student, students that did the internship in St. Petersburg. And I came just to meet new people, to socialize, to know them more and uh, this is what the reason why I came uh, uh, for the salsa club, and uh, that's why I started dancing. But um, I stayed. I mean, not even. Uh, yeah, I, I actually I switched to Zouk because at that time um, the dance school there was no Zouk actually in Russia, in Saint Petersburg. So I am the co-founder of the Brazilian Zouk in Russia. It happened to be like that. So the school that I was dancing, the salsa club, the teachers uh, that were dancing salsa, they also introduced another style, dance style, and it was Zouk. And the new teacher uh, came, and it was, uh, they were two girls, Anastasia and Dan. Anastasia used to be my dance partner, now she's my business partner, and, uh, and in school, in the events. And um, they actually started teaching Zouk because they, they were, uh, for half a year, the lead in Rio de Janeiro. And they, uh, they, they were, I think they were professional ling linguists or teachers of uh, Portuguese language. And they had the internship in Rio for half a year or even more. And they learned Zouk there. And when they uh, were back to St. Petersburg, uh, they told me, they wanted to continue, but there was nothing in St. Petersburg, in Moscow, in Russia at all. And they decided to try themselves just to continue dancing. And this is how I switched to Zouk. I'm very curious. Um, is there a big social dancing scene in Russia? Is that known? Is Russia known as a, you know, as a dance country at all or? I, I, do, I, do you asking about the social uh, dancing scene or in general? Um, I guess in general. Well, yeah, I guess in general. Yeah, yeah. Did, did uh, when growing up in Russia, did you, you you didn't grow up dancing, right? Correct. 
because I was doing sports a lot. Okay, okay. <laughs> and and so and so I guess I guess um is is uh what is the word um you know like swing is ballroom dancing is ballroom dancing very popular and more so than yeah. than salsa and Brazilian zouk. In Russia, the ballroom dancing is very strong, very strong. And uh, I think you might know that we have the strongest in the world uh, ballet, classical ballet school. So dancing is very popular in Russia, but classical one. I mean, classical ballet, ballroom dancing. Socials such as salsa, bachata, kizomba, Brazilian zuclampada, they're very popular as well, but um, unfortunately, they are still considered to be socials, like um, after work hobby. Yeah, I understand that. I definitely understand that. So, so tell me this, man. I'm very curious to hear from you. Tell me about your beginner stage learning Zook. What was that like for you? Well, for me, it was actually very difficult because uh, as I said before, uh, I, I had no teacher, actually, the one that could teach me. So Anastasia, she was teaching me, but she was a, a, a beginner teacher and dancer as well. So we didn't have the scene. We didn't have the teachers. For example, when you come uh, learning Zook to my school now, you will have professional teachers that will teach you and guide you to the whole process of um, uh, learning Brazilian Zouk, for example, or bachata, or lambada, yes? Uh, but now we, we had nothing there. So what we did from the very first, um, from the very first steps, uh, we actually started organizing the events. We started from small workshops. We, we um, we joined two schools, two dance schools, in order to grow the community. Because one school couldn't help us to uh, grow the community. Then we, when we realized that we have at least like 40, 50 uh, students, we, we started inviting professional dancers. Uh, such as, for example, you might know Freddy Marino, Andresa Castigliano. You, you, you don't know them. Well... <laughs> They are very good professional dancers. Uh, they in Brazilian Zouk Dance Council um, community. And we started inviting Brazilians and taking privates with them, learning um, Brazilian Zouk all the time. This is how we did. Uh, as well as we started uh, giving workshops in Russian. This is how we learned uh, how to perform on the stage how to give workshops for people. Uh, and uh, we actually learned on our mistakes all um, the time. I want to I wanna ask you two questions real quick. So, so would you say that you are one of the like originators to bring, you know, Brazilian Zoo to Russia? Me and Anastasia. Okay, right, right, right. Not, and, not only me. Right, uh, Anastasia. Anastasia. Anastasia, I, you might know her probably. Uh, she's dancing now with Carlos Oliveira. Uh, I will send you the link later. Maybe you know her. Uh, please. Uh, so Anastasia and me, yes. Okay, I understand that. And I want to go back. I want to go back to uh, what you said in the beginning when you said that, you know, uh, Anastasia was a beginner teacher and she was teaching you. I want to, I want to. She's my first teacher. Yes. Right, right. I, I understand how difficult that may be when you have a beginner instructor because you may pick up some bad habits, correct? <laughs> no, well, it's not bad habits, I can say, but it's just, um, I wouldn't say, yeah, probably I would reformulate it like that. So we didn't have enough knowledge so that uh, we learned something. Then we realize that it is wrong because we invited um, uh, the Brazilian Zouk uh, professional uh, instructor from Brazil for the workshop. But the process, even when you learn it wrong, gives you a lot of knowledge and uh, it helps you then to level up. Let me let me ask you this, man. I, I would love to hear from you. Um, 
let's say there's an individual out there who, you know, whatever, wherever they're from, unfortunately, you know, they don't, they don't have many options for instructors. You know, they really want to get into Brazilian Duke, into Lombada, into Samba, but unfortunately they don't have, um, you know, a plethora of instructors to choose from. What, what advice, what, what could you tell that person if they really want to get into it? What can they do? Well, as, uh, as far as I know, after coronavirus, actually, the, uh, there is a lot of things to learn, even if you don't have a strong teacher in your city. You can learn, try to learn online, at least, to do some basic stuff. Because to explain the basics of Brazilian Zouk can be done online easily. And there are many, many, many materials uh, in the internet. Of course, good material costs money as a subscription, but these money are very affordable. Because uh, when we started, we didn't have it. We have to pay for the tickets, for the accommodation, for the rate, for the food, but now you can pay like, let it be like 50 bucks per month and you can uh, learn, have the basic course, then intermediate, advanced, super advanced. So now there's lots of uh, opportunities to learn from online, offline. So, yeah. Okay. Now it's easy. Hey, I definitely understand that. I definitely do, man. Let me ask you this, sir. Um, you know, what are some lessons that you've learned from dancing that you're able to translate to your everyday life? Well, dancing, uh, being a, a dancer and a teacher, it's, um, first of all, it's a very hard work. Some people think that we are just enjoying our time, but we are working. It's our, uh, it's not even lifestyle, it's our life. So, and dancing, actually, the dancing is, uh, first of all, it's uh, about, any work is about hard work, but dancing is about cooperation with other people, especially when we're speaking about the social dancing and couple dancing, it's cooperation with your partner, because it's the way that you should adjust and adapt to the peculiarities and the character of your partner. Because as I say, as I always say, when people are assessing your level, they are assessing you as a couple, not as a single dancer. And, but uh, for me, the most difficult was to realize that because I was doing a lot of sports myself, relying only on me, on me in basketball, in bodybuilding. I was relying on me. But then... When I started doing um, dancing in a couple, I realized that we are one single unit. If one unit is weaker, that means that all of us are weak. And this is a very cool thing that you can rely on someone. At the same time, you trust him and all of you are working as a one team. It's very cool. I like it a lot. I'm curious, when did you become a full-time dancer? What year was that? Full-time dancer. So I started dancing 12 years ago, um, but I worked simultaneously in uh, L'Oreal. Do you know that company? Oh, yeah, yeah the, the makeup and all that? Yeah, it's a big, big hold. No, it's, it's, it's not even a holding. It's... Uh, big international company. I worked as a sales director there. <laughs> and uh, so I think I started 12 years ago. I worked simultaneously in L'Oreal because I, I need some money to work, to live for. And since two years of dancing, I left L'Oreal and concentrated on full-time dancing. So, so you've been a full-time dancer for the past two years? No, oh, for, for the past 10 years. Okay, 10 years. Okay, okay. So I want to I wanna talk about that. So tell me, Moen, what, what was that first year like? That first year when you leave L'Oreal 
and you become a full-time dancer. What was that first year like for you? That was, you can't even imagine, that was very difficult, actually. We, uh, it's a good thing that I managed to save money because we didn't earn anything on it. We just managed to survive. Uh, it was just crazy. We, uh, we worked in two schools. We um, organized different workshops. We organized some team buildings uh, just to grow the community because uh, the Zook was so weak in Russia. Uh, so the Zook was only in St. Petersburg and a bit of Zook and in Moscow. All the rest was uh, like empty. And we uh, tried to, first of all, survive ourselves. And uh, secondly, uh, we uh, tried to develop the Zook scene in Russia. So the, the first years were very difficult, but it was nice to go back to recollect uh, how it was. So I think it was good memories to, uh, to recollect these memories again. I think it's, it was hard work, but still very nice. Let me ask you this. Um, for somebody who wants to be in your position, you know, they want to quit their nine to five and they want to become a full time dancer. What is required of them? What, what skills, what attributes, you know, what do they need to have in order to become successful? Well, it, uh, actually, you should have only one thing, huge dedication to what you do. Otherwise, you are actually sorry for the expression. You are fucked up. Uh, you won't be able to. Yeah, you won't be able to because um, you should invest a lot, a lot in what you do. So for me, uh, the formula is dead easy, but people don't understand it because we have so many dancers in Russia and they want to work with Brazilian Zuko, any other dance, salsa, bachata, kizomba, but they are still doing their regular work and they... Uh, come and teach in the evening, but it's not enough. You see, the, uh, the formula is very easy. First, in order to grow a tree, you should buy a seed, you should water it, you should uh, take time and protect it from strong wind, from cold, so you should invest your time. And only after that, you will get the green leaves, and maybe some berries, I don't know what you have, oranges, kiwis, but it's, it's only like that. You either, you first invest, and then you will get on what you invested, or you will get nothing. Many people uh, don't understand it. So yeah, this is actually the, the one thing that I, I real, not realize now, but I see now from other people that want to, uh they we want to dance we want to open the school but it's hard work it's very difficult very difficult and they think that okay i will leave my job and i will open the school and we'll have many many students and it's so easy so cool uh the mathematic the financial stuff is so easy look i will pay for the rent of the dance hall so this is how many memberships i will sell easy look i'm rich no <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let me. I'm very curious to hear from you, man. Um, you know, this might be a redundant question, but you know, tell me what what is the difference in your life between year one as a full time dancer and you know year ten, you know, this year. You know what what has changed for you? When we started uh, working for ourselves. Uh, we did everything, and I think it's all right. Uh, I was the cleaner in my school. I was cleaning the floor. I was swiping the floor, the reception. Uh, I was buying water for the students. So I did everything myself, as well as Anastasia, my partner. We did every, everything, only two of us. Administration, uh, marketing sort of marketing we didn't know about marketing at that time proper 
sort of sales. So everything were, were did by us. Uh, guys, we are organizing the workshop. Let's do all together. Woohoo! Come on. So some only like that on our motivation. So we were very much, and we are still motivated, but it was only like that. Very well, the first stage, primitive stage, it's normal. Now, uh, what we have now is that um uh, first of all, we have the biggest dance school in Russia with the branch in Novosibirsk, it's the city in Siberia. We have in our team about um, 15 teachers including international professionals such as um, Brazilian teachers that are permanently based in Russia and they are champions in Brazilian Zouk, acknowledged by Brazilian Zouk Dance Council. They are very professional. We have uh, about 15 people in marketing, sales, design, social media marketing, marketing, copywriting and everything. <laughs> we organizing the biggest and one of the biggest congresses in russia it's russian zoo congress actually one of the best congresses in the world and i will explain to you why but it is really so um we are organizing zook one love uh, marathon it's the uh it's sort of only dancing without classes we call it zook one love but uh, but we are doing our rebranding we want to make it zook one love music and festival only so it will be devoted to music and dance without classes uh for technique but only classes for the music like dj forums and stuff like that we uh, are organizing russian zook awards it's sort of an oscar in brazilian zook uh so by the end of the year we uh, have this uh, uh this event where people the community of russia choosing uh the best uh, people for example the best partner the best dance school the best zook dance event uh the hope of the year the couple of the year uh, the project of the year something like that uh what else uh and we uh we will we are gonna uh found the uh, russian but no brazilian dance federation soon the first one actually in russia that is supported by brazilian zook dance council so this is what we have for now that's a, that's a lot of stuff man so so not only are you a full-time dancer but you're also a, a business owner correct obviously correct I'm very curious, man. Um, were you able to translate anything you learned from L'Oreal into how you run your own business? Um, I think as I was responsible for the sales, uh, in terms of the sales, yes, but only in terms of the sales. But there are many, many things when you start working and um, manage the business, there are many, many things that I actually learned bit by bit during the process it's how to hire people how to manage people how to make them happy and motivate them how to control their work how to set up goals and formulate their tasks because sometimes for you when you say you should do like that it's so much obvious but not for other people uh, marketing as well because i was not that professional marketing uh, what else? Uh, public relations. Um, how to run a business uh, as an owner. What the owner should do, because uh, there are operations. There is operation level. Uh, there is a tactical level and strategical level, and all these levels require different skills. So uh, this is what I learned, and I'm still learning a lot. Uh, I'm taking a lot of uh, private uh, coaching sessions with uh, successful business owners that have like millions of uh, dollars turnover per year, even more, like tens of millions. They're, they're professional. And that they are um, helping me, giving advices on how to run uh, the company, how to do it, how to manage people. So. 
it's still the process that it's an ongoing process. You are still learning all the time. Mm. And and are you still currently teaching as well at your dance studio? Yes, because I I was able to um, employ very good uh, professionals in different spheres, and it's not only me that teach, but other teachers, as I said. And I can concentrate first of all on teaching because I love it. It's an amazing uh, source of energy. You are exchanging the energy with the students. It's very cool. Um, and I'm able to teach and perform and give the workshops, uh, classes in Russia and, uh, in, and abroad in Europe. But I have uh, very strong uh, professionals that are running the business as well, the school. Uh, they are um, the directors, the academic directors, marketing directors, sales. Mm -hmm. So I have some time for myself. This is teaching is for myself, for my soul, for my heart. You see? I definitely understand that, man. I want to I wanna ask you a couple more questions real quick, so I don't want to hold you too much longer. Um, no problem. What advice could you give to someone who may feel like they're stuck in a, in a rut, like they're not progressing, they're not getting better? It's very nice, actually, when you feel that you are stuck and you are not progressing. That means that, uh, you know, the graph of the uh, shares, for example, on a stock exchange, it goes like that, up, down, up, down. So, but in general, the trend should be vertical because the rest is the correction, right? You're going up, then correction, up, correction. If a person feels like he, uh, not even, if a person has thoughts that something is going wrong and he or she is not progressing, it's very good. That means that he will, he will invest or she will invest in himself, herself, to progress more. It's a normal process. Uh, it's very bad when you don't feel it, and we don't notice that. It's very bad that you, you think that you are the best of the best. You know everything. You know how to teach. You know how to perform. You know how to give the workshops, and you don't need actually anything. You are the king. So this is very bad. But if a person feels like that, my congratulations, I can tell you. Very good. You might not, you will not be, but you might progress again more and more. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, when I say the word musicality, what does that mean to you? Musicality. That is very difficult for me. Nah. There, there are two things that, I'm still learning. Okay. And these are the connection, how to be the ideal partner, connection, and the musicality. Uh, because music, uh, it actually, it drives you to dance. And I even have the course, the musicality course uh, for students and for professional uh, teachers of Brazilian Zouk on how to I call it mathematical musicality because music is mathematical. And for me, it was and still a big challenge to be musical dancer. And I invested a lot in myself uh, on how to listen to the music, how to play with the different, uh, I'll say, play with the different uh, tricky things that music gives you and it it, it requires you to play with it. And uh, musicality is a huge challenge for me. Again, as, as I said, if you remember, I don't have the dancing background. And for me, I, I've been just dancing for 12 years. For me, musicality is an ongoing process of learning music, dancing, not only music, dancing through the music. Because if you understand and realize the music how it's going your dance because your dance is an indispensable part of the music and your dance can be 
natural and beautiful for the people that are uh, watching you. Okay, I definitely understand that, man. Uh, last question for you. Can you give me one tip, one piece of advice that can make anyone a better dancer immediately? No, 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 I can't. Sorry, man, that's a, that's a tricky question. This is a very tricky question because I'm not giving magic pills to anyone. Uh, when we teach, for example, I have um, the group, I don't teach a lot of uh, beginners now, but when I have the beginners, uh, I think that they're very lucky because they have me, because I understand them as I don't have the dancing background. And we usually try to make it, as, a te as teachers with Oksana, we try to make all the classes very funny, uh, very ener high energetic, uh, very comfortable for them. They should feel themselves like they're in the family. But then, only then, in three months, we say, guys, dancing is very easy. Uh, not Sorry, it's not very easy. It's very difficult. And there, there are no magic pills for you to dance like that. It's uh, hard work if you want to look good, if you want to be a good partner if you want to have good connection. So unfortunately, man, sorry, I have to disappoint you, but I don't give magic pills. We don't have them. Uh, we, in our dance school and as a teacher, as an artist, I can motivate people to continue dancing. I can make them stay in Brazilian Zouk, in Bachata, Samba, in our school, continue, just continue dancing. But um, there are no magic pills. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I definitely understand that, man. I want to um, I want to thank you, Maxine, for you know taking time to talk to me, sir. It's my pleasure, man. Thank you very much. It was very cool that we did manage it. I really appreciate it. And in general, uh, your request for doing it was very cool for me. Hey. My question, maybe, do you have some couple of minutes? Definitely, of course, of course. Are you dancing yourself? Of course, yes, sir. I I, I have a story similar to yours. I uh, started with salsa, then transitioned into bachata, then to kizamba, and then to Brazilian zouk. Who are your teachers? Who are my teachers? Who? So I'm in the military, so I move around a lot. So unfortunately, I don't have a consistent teacher. And unfortunately, where I live now, I'm unable to dance, man. So I haven't been to a social in maybe a year. Because of COVID? Um, because of COVID and as well, the, I live in Guam now and there's not much of a dancing scene here. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so I, I, if I'm being honest with you, I'm still very much a beginner in Brazilian Zouk, but my heart is in Kizomba. Do y'all dance Kizomba at all? A bit. Yes, I'm dancing a bit of Kizomba as well. Yeah, I, lo I love Kizomba. That's my favorite dance. That's my favorite dance. <laughs> yeah, the best connection, actually, one of the best connections, the, the dance that is inside, that is beautiful inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's very cool. Cool. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Very nice. We had some, actually, not some, but we have many, we had many guys from the U.S. at mm -hmm. Russian Zoo Congress nice. in 2019. Very, very nice community. Yeah. Very nice people. Some of my students that started dancing with me 12 years ago okay. now moved to moved to the US. And he's, uh, he's still dancing there a bit. And um, it's very cool that he's continuing dancing. But I liked a lot the US scene. It's very nice. Yeah. I probably, I so I'll be, I'll be 30 this year. I probably, I probably started taking salsa classes back when I was like 21. So um, it's cool. definitely it's definitely like a passion of mine. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Check very that. cool that we with that we met because I wonder how you found us. How you found this oh, yeah. video? I find a lot of my uh, interviewees through Instagram, Instagram and Facebook, but more a majority through Instagram. I saw some mm -hmm. of your videos uh, on Instagram, and I was like, man, this guy's a really good dancer. I would love to have him on the show. I reached out to you and, you know, thankful to you. We were able to set it up. That's cool. That's cool. Man. It's very really nice. The, the, the world now 
is getting smaller and smaller because <laughs> the social the social networks are connecting yeah. people around the world. That's very cool. Uh, if you have the opportunity, you are more than welcome at Russian Zoo Congress. Oh man, I would love to. I would love to Please come. There, there are no visas actually now. We have free electronic visas for eight days. That's it. Yeah, very easy. You just need actually to go directly to Russia. This is the uh, important uh, uh, point. No direct flights to Russia, not via like Europe, France, or the hub is in France or in Germany. Uh, so you should go directly to Russia, and then you have free e visa. I would, I would absolutely love to, um, you know, come to your dance school, come to your 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 festival, man, and you know, take some class with you. I would absolutely love that. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so wait, real quick, real quick, tell me this. I know, I know times are kind of crazy right now, but do you have any upcoming events? Anything you want to plug? Anything you want to share with the people? Yes, we have, uh, we have uh, in. In 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 uh, at the end of uh, April, in the beginning of May, we have Zook One Love. It's a music festival. Uh, we have about twelve DJs there, mm, so it will be like four days, many many hours of dancing. Very cool location. Very cool location. And uh, in uh, in May in Saint Petersburg, it's very warm, very nice. So. Uh, we have many, many dances from Russia, from uh, uh, Belarus, uh, some dances from Finland are coming as well. So we'll, I hope this year we'll have the international um, participants. I hope everything is all right after COVID. It's difficult to, uh, to plan. But the biggest event is Russian Zoo Congress. We have 10, 10 years anniversary and it will be very, very big. I put, I set the goal for me, 1,000 people. I will send you the promo for Russian Zoo Congress. We have actually already two, <laughs> two promos now. Uh, have a look, check it up. If you have the opportunity to share in uh, the American dance community, it would be great. But our goal is, yes, 1,000 people. We have an amazing venue of uh, 1,500 square meters of the dance floor. 1,500 square meters of dance floor, professional light, sound, the best teachers, artists in the world, professionals. And um, yeah, we want to make it amazing because we, we also decided to do, I think it will be the first one party actually in the world of Zook. We rented the uh, club, but aqua club. So it's like a club, but with a lot, lots of water. So it's a professional. So instead of the dance floor, there's water, professional sound system, professional uh, um, lighting system. We also did the, um, we rented the, uh, it's uh, like a foam dance hall where you dance in the foam. So it will be very, it's actually will be the Russian Zoo Congress 6 will be fantastic. And this party will be like, you know, the cherry on the top of the cake. That's it. Okay, that's that's awesome, man. That's awesome. That sounds really, really cool. I, that sounds absolutely amazing, man. Um, let ask a question for you, man. How can people reach out to you? How can they get in contact with you? Well, it's easy. They can write me on Instagram, for example, on Facebook. I'm happy to help just as you did, actually. No problem. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, real quick, I'll make sure I put your uh, your handles in the uh, description. So, Maxime, I want to say again, man, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Um, I can tell how dedicated you are, man. You've turned your passion into a full-fledged business, which is super inspiring, super amazing to hear, man. I, I really appreciate you talking to me thank you man so much it was good to meet to you so if you have any questions or just just shout right in instagram i'm happy to uh, help and cooperate yeah um i'm sorry man my uh my headphones are acting up but uh, thank you again thank you again maxine thank you so much thank you man have thank a good day take have it a good evening actually